So here we are again with Bad Influence and this is actually the end of Season 1. This is episode number 12, airing on January the 28th, 1993. One of the best years to be alive, especially in terms of game consoles and the like. Let's get stuck in. Hi App, welcome to a very special Bad Influence. The whole show this week is being transmitted in surround sound. Wow, and surround sound. Uses surround sound to really immerse you in the action. Oh. And the main review is Super Star Wars on the SNES. Super Star Wars. Universal Studios in Hollywood, where you can experience movie special effects all day, every day. Z Wright is out having fun again as usual. And all we need is a studio to send a very latest laser game. <sighs> Quasar, Megazone, I love those places. This is a new game out on the SNES in May. It's called King Arthur's World, and it's a strategy game set in medieval times. Looks like lemmings to me. What's really new and interesting about this game is that it's the first one ever to use surround sound. So what's surround sound? Well, it's exactly what you might imagine. It's sound designed to surround you. Um, it was originally used in cinemas. You may have experienced it there. When you see maybe a plane taking off and it comes over the screen and supposedly goes off into the distance, you don't see it, but you hear it. Or if something approaches you from behind, sometimes you hear it from behind before you see it. I think I only ever played my consoles in mono through like a little 14-inch TV when I was... Like this one. I've got some alive. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm, I'm still alive, obviously. In the 90s. My baby, you've got a TV and you've got a video, but you'd still like surround sound. Then what you need to buy is a special amplifier like this. No one could afford that, Andy. Are rather expensive. <laughs> exactly. Domestic home uh, surround sound systems have four or five speakers. One on left and right of the television. Sometimes there's one down here too, a centre speaker for centre sounds and speech. And then, fairly obviously, you need two behind you. It's a bit masochistic watching this, isn't it? Because sounds that come from behind. You, you end up watching so many things you can't days are made in surround sound. afford. You can get the experience even when they're transmitted on telly or video because the surround sound information is already encoded on the video that you or I would rent from the this is the, shop. These are the reasons why I still want all these consoles like the Mega CD today. I've just clung on to that need for all the things I saw in magazines, on TV, which I really wanted. Time on my left, front right. And all the way around again. During game play, the sounds obviously come from all over the place, but on the, uh, the test screen, for some strange reason, people die behind you. Why not? And uh, sort In the of wake of your path. You. And thunder happens all over the place. The there was always one really rich kid at school, wasn't there, who had like a setup like this, and you were like, you bastard. We'll be finishing it around about my 65th birthday. It's kind of a medieval version of Lemmings. You're in charge of King Arthur and his court of loyal followers, setting out on a crusade to rid the world of tyrants. Never played that, but I do want to. I like the look of it. Different characters with different skills. Here it's archers, swordsmen, engineers, and foot soldiers. And there are some horrible traps waiting for you, from spike-filled pits to cauldrons of boiling oil. Wow. There's also a cloud world, ruled by a dark wizard and filled with giant snails. Watch out, the wizard will turn you into a zombie. If you're not one already... Has anyone right. played that? What are your thoughts? Is it worth playing? There are 23 very challenging levels, but there's no time limit. The game continues to run as long as King Arthur is alive, so you're well advised to keep him to the side and out of the fray. Good luck! Look at that guy, he's a bit geegerish, isn't he? Our main review this week would sound fantastic in surround sound, but I'm afraid we've only got the game in boring old stereo. It's the Super Star Wars on the SNES. Everything you'd expect to see is here, the evil Empire, rebel spaceships, and of course, Luke Skywalker. And here he is, with Alex, in the Dune Sea. Of course, this is before this is the first three game. movies came out, thankfully. One, it's got everything you need. This is the land speed. 60 quid. It's one of my favourite levels. What you've got to do is kill the Jawas that come out from that sand crawler in the distance. Cartridge prices were so crazy. Speed, you can turn around 360 degrees on the screen. Look at that, that is... Excellent. You use the jet fuel to blast around the level. This is why people wanted the SNES. Really annoying. Oh, Super Nintendo, SNES, that's those sort of graphics. Really challenging, but I think this one's my favourite. I think I'd buy this game. Mode it's 7 all the way. But it's worth it. There's loads of levels and loads of characters too. This is smooth with beautiful graphics. I think it's perfect. It's the best shoot-em-up I've ever seen. 
I'd pay £60 for this. I don't say that about many games. The graphics are stunning. Good for you, good, mate. I didn't have £60 then. The final scores for Super Star Wars. The boys gave it 5 out of 5, and the girls gave it maximum points too. 5 out of 5 from them. That's, why, that's when birthdays and Christmas were so important. Rude is unable to be with us today, so I've stepped in at the very last moment. It's all right, Slimy Furtlers, it's me, really, in disguise. Oh, Nam. Sonic 2 cheat, straight from Japan. <laughs> and no one must know that I've told you. Oh, and by the way, this isn't uh, spiky, it's um, spiky 2. So... Was that, it actually moved? Was that actually Sonic a real hedgehog? Wow. Drive. First, go to the options screen and select sounds in this order for about 15 seconds each. A 19, 65, 09, 17. Then, start the game. When Sonic appears and vaggles his finger, quickly hit A and start together to get the level select screen. Well, hey! There you go, Spikey! Wing Fortress! <laughs> oh, what a giveaway! Now, your floor is terribly unstable. Who was that masked man? We just heard, by the way, that the release date for Super Star Wars has been postponed until May, but it's obviously one worth looking at. May? It's May now! Remember, we reviewed Streets of Rage 2 and told you the price was 39.99. Something we were told by Sega was correct. We've had lots of calls from people saying they've paid $44.99. Whoa! We checked this with Sega and they said, in fact, that is the correct price. Sega say they're sorry. But they're not as sorry as all the people who paid £5 more than they'd expected, eh? Sega, you nincompoops. This is L Fish. It's the latest idea from the people who came up with Tetris. Let's design your own fish. Oh, I, I was obsessed with this when I first got my PC. I've already started to design. I've put the floor in the back and a few plants. Fish tank screensavers. Put a few objects in it. Jazz it up a bit. Hey, why? It's not... And here are all the different types of things you can put in. It's just a novelty factor. A digital fish tank. Imagine that. Fish tank. There you go. Now I can place it wherever I want. Now I'm going to put an animated object in. I think I'll put this crab in. Yeah, slap a crab in there, Violet. It crawls out of the shell and back in again. Oh, that is nice. Nice aesthetic. That is very feng shui. It's fish. So we go to the fish screen. All these fish have been designed by the computer, but you can actually breed your own. And that takes quite a long time. It takes even longer because you can actually evolve them, and that can take hours. So we're not going to do this. I'm just that is the sort of stuff I'm talking about. I've asked for one of each, and now we can view it. I could have spent hours evolving fish. And then you get all your fish swimming around in your own design tank. And what's really good is that you can feed them, and you can turn the light oh, off. Oh, this might be worthy of, of a review. I might have to and get hold can, of this. Uh, feed them, and you can feed them to people who can't stand too much excitement, really. Our American yes, me. <laughs> from Z Wright. He told us he was going to visit the movie studio, but in fact, he seems to have got caught up in an earthquake. Z always gets to do the fun things, doesn't he? That's why I resent him. You don't watch the real life movie being made? You take my advice. Don't bother. It's just lots of hanging around. And when the director calls action, the special effects never look good. Nowadays, it's all done with camera angles and editing. Now, I'm on computers now, mate. Yeah. This is Universal Studios tour here in Hollywood. It's a spectacular look behind the scenes of the world's largest film and television studios. Tram ride tour of the back lot takes you past famous movie sets and you experience back to the future. But did it always look so cool to go there. But the queues. Oh man, the queues. It's all done with computers. Even King Kong himself is a 10 meter tour robot. I went to Disneyland Paris once and the queues there were bad enough. And if you survive the tour of the back lot, you can watch teams of stuntmen recreate scenes from movies in front of your very eyes. I think I'll stick to Pleasure with Hills and their great armor. Um... Vice. To E.T. But the newest is also potentially the most dangerous. Backdraft! Based on the firefighting movie Backdraft, the audience gets to see 30 major fires and 10 explosions in a couple of minutes. Backdraft is a really interesting show because it's a live firestorm. I mean, we're putting 150. He looks people too professional. Of, uh, enormous to be in this studio. He should be wearing like fire kit. Gas, uh, 
Get in the pot, mate. It's a liquid oxygen every every 30 seconds, so it's, it's a tremendous show. When we build an attraction, especially an attraction like this, where the star of our attraction is... You can at least have a fire-blazing tie. ...different challenge than what a film will have. Not only do we have to do it repeatably, we have to do it hundreds... If it was literally on fire, that would be even better. Just slowly creeping up towards his chin. In order to have any control over the fire, we had to rely on computers to really do everything from the moment the gas arrives at the building all the way through the system, through the valves, through the burners, through the igniters. The computers control it step by step by step. It's burn, baby, burn. Disco. That would be better if I had that music playing while this was happening. Really, before a computer can do anything, the first thing the computer has to look for is that the fact there is no flame. The very next command it's going to get is to start a flame. It wants to see that that spark plug is lit and has to verify it back to the computer. After that, the computer can then allow in the right timing to open the valve and a pre-released or pre-measured portion of natural gas is then ignited and set out through a burner. He is bricking his pants, isn't he? We are sensing temperature in the attic, along the ceiling, at the audience level, throughout the show. And the computer's taking all of these uh, temperature sensor readings and making sure that we're oh, in an acceptable range. That's a nice range. screen, look at that. In addition to temperature, we're looking at oxygen levels. Oh, look at the windows, they're all like... Not enough oxygen. Oh, that is just nice. It's just like a DOS-based application with windows. There and get a little closer to the flames. That's what it looks like. Well, after that, there's only one thing for it. I'm off to a barbecue. Hey, stay cool, Zed. Oh, he's got some Reeboks. What about Reebok pump? Kind of infinite lives cheap for Cool World on the Atari. At any point during the game, just type in, Colin broke my Walkman. What about Reebok? You can also type in there. Uh, what were those ones called? Reebok Energy, weren't they? With the little bits in the in the, sh in the sh I was obsessed with trainers. Trainers. Obviously, it's only the first one that has any effect on the game whatsoever, and you get infinite life. Who did the torsion bars? There was a one brand who did like torsion. Who was that? Bar out and groovy man. <laughs> Can't remember. Peace and love now. Now for this week's news and previews. One of the most playable and addictive games we've come across recently for the SNES is this puzzle game called Equinox. SNES. Well, to the NES game, Solstice. You play a cute little hero who has to rid his world from evil. That annoys so many people outside the UK. SNES. Which it's just quicker. It's quicker to say it. SNES. Just like the acronym SCUBA in scuba diving rather than SCUBA diving. All that and more for just one ninety-five. They only made two episodes of that magazine, two issues of that magazine, which is quite humorous. Who has to save all the world's eggs from a wild world where they're being hoarded by a baddie. Can't remember this game. On the Game Boy in May, the Amiga in July, and the SNES in October. Oh, yes, I can! Yeah, the chicken! I just couldn't wake him out on the Game Boy graphics. Ariel! It makes her first appear on some two formats. I was talking about this. Mega Drive. A task is in my Mario Mega Drive video. The mer people into little wormy things. Here's Kathleen to take. Gotta be careful. I got some facts wrong in that. People were outraged. This is a good game, actually. Probably enjoy the game. You can choose to be Ariel or Dad Triton. I prefer to be Ariel. These wriggly snakes. It's a bit like Echo. Have been changed. But by the wicked witch. Ariel. I like the idea that she has to sing to her enemies. You can call different friends. This one's a fish and it pushes a rock. You should look into the treasure chest because there's all sorts of treasure hidden. I see they've got the stereotypical little girl to play this for a... The map shows where the map is... Oh, look at that map! That is marvellous! And the other bits are a friend... It's like a spectrum map in a magazine. But I'm not sure I'd buy it. There are only four levels and they're all much the same. This is just a poorer version of Echo the Dolphin. Oh, it's marvellous, mate. Stop giving it a bad name. I definitely won't buy it. It's only 35 quid too. I like this game. I think Ariel moves well. I like the sound she makes when she sings. I like your jumper. 
Look at that, a roan, poppy, or whatever it was. The boys gave it an average nice. score of three out of five, but the girls liked it a bit more and gave it four out. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, yeah. Return to the dawn of history with Diamond Olympics on the Lynx. Oh, Lynx games, they don't, they don't often do these. ...to discover spears, wheels and fire in an effort to stop your tribe from becoming extinct. Here's Ian, the caveman. Of course, on, on this you don't see the blurriness of the actual Lynx screen. It looks. The graphics are the best I've seen on a handheld, and it's extremely playable. That's because the Lynx is the nuts, mate. Here I've got to pick up the torch and toggle through my abilities to throw it. I've got throw now, so here we go. Now comes back down the ladder, and I have to go collect the person who is supporting everybody else using the rope. Right, he's over the rope now. If you get into problems, you can summon the magic man. We'll trade one member of your tribe for a spear or any other piece of equipment you might need. This seems like a nice concept for a game. This is addictively playable. I'd buy it and I'd certainly recommend it for anybody who likes this sort of game. I might buy this. It's a puzzling game with great graphics, but the men go too slowly and they keep running out of time. I like this game, even though it's not in the same league as Lemmings. But if you're a fan of this game, this is If they got paid for doing these reviews or whether they got free games or what? The boys gave it four out of five, and the girls liked it just as much. They gave it four out of five. All right, Biggles. Right, Techie Furtless. This is a Tayek for UN Squadron on the SNES. Now, a Tayek is a backwards cheat. It makes the game harder. All you have to do is first of all go to the options screen. Then, with control. That's the opposite of a cheat. Difficulties until you see the word hard. Then, with control pad 2, hold down A and X together. Then back to control pad 1, scrolling through until you see the word GAMER. You'll now be on a mega difficult level of the sort that only a complete expert of my calibre can get through. <laughs> up, up and away! Nice one, then. Andy? Violet? What's going on? Where is everybody? Yes. This is Laser Force, the latest laser game. I loved these. More people will hit you. Birthday parties at the Quasar. Best birthday parties there were. It's so dark in here that we've had to use special cameras, which is why the pictures look a bit grainy. They look grainy anyway, we're in the 90s. I love the music, it's like it's off a porn film or something. That's what counts. This is the portable play area that gets taken round to exhibitions and TV studios. It takes about 30 minutes to inflate. The gun barrel fires off a low powered laser. You can tell Violet loves stuff like this. What you can't see is it also fires out an infrared beam that comes from here. And that's like what you use on your tele remote control. And that is identified by the target on your front and your back. I think Andy's just hit me. I think Andy just likes jumping about. But I can't hit him back straight away. Because when I've been told by the electronic voice that I've just been hit, it disables my gun for four seconds. Me and my mate had some... Um... So coded, which means... Of the toy ones, like the Sega lock-on guns, that you could play with just in general use around the house. They were ones which clipped onto your arm, they weren't official lock-on guns, but they were quite cool. It's not quite the same though without the, the actual enclosure of the arena. A Super Mario paint and a snares, and the competition question was... Who painted the Mona Lisa? They had one of those robots at uh, uh, Megazone in Norwich. Well, you could shoot it and get points, I believe. We had over 8,000 entries. Thank you if you wrote in. But our random winner selection system has come up with James Lamb, age nine, from White Cross in Hereford. Well done, James. Gotcha. This week's competition prize is a Minister and a Mega Drive, which Violet's got. No, I haven't. You had it last. Uh, anyway, the question is, what does the word laser stand for? Send answer for the sealed down envelope or a postcard for you should Large, aerobic, super erroneous rubber. Join us next week for the last of the present series when we I thought this was the last of the present series. Over the summer. See you then. Bye bye. See ya. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Is there a series? Isn't that episode 13? 
I was wrong. That's episode 13. I was sure this was the last of the series. Oh, excellent. We can look forward to that next time. Thanks for watching this one, and I will see you then. Hopefully, have a great evening, and be sure to pause your way through the data blast. Toodaloo!